so I read this article and I'll put a link to it in the description um, also all the facts and figures I'm going to be giving will also be in the description um, so let me get the title back up to it um, so it was by Forbes magazine and it's 10 lies distort the gun control debate now I'm not going to be reading the whole thing to you I was reading excerpts so lie one there is no connection between mass gun ownership and gun deaths from the article it seems obvious that a country flooded with guns will have higher rates of gun deaths than countries with few of these weapons mass gun ownership leads to higher rates of gun death switzerland provides a useful comparison since it is the only place that comes close to our levels of gun ownership let's look into it so uh, according to wikipedia the united states in 2017 had 300 93,347,000 guns. Switzerland had 8,454,000. Hmm. Well, that's weird. Because India has 1,342,513,000 guns. A lot higher than the United States. China has 1,388,000 233,000 guns. Again, a lot higher than the United States. In fact, the closest one I could find to the United States was Indonesia with 263,510,000. But Switzerland is the only place that comes close to our level of gun ownership. Hmm. Maybe not. Now from the article, the connection between gun ownership and gun deaths is unavoidably linear. Okay, so again from Wikipedia. Now, the gun deaths I'm going to give you are per 100,000. The gun ownership is per 100. So, the United States 2017 had a gun death rate of 12.21 with an ownership rate of 120.5. Okay, Venezuela 2013 gun death rate 49.22 with 18.5% gun ownership. So they have less guns, but more gun deaths. El Salvador, 2011, 41.56 gun death, 5.8 gun ownership. Again, less guns, more gun death. Brazil, 2012, 21.9 gun deaths, 8.6 guns. Again, less guns, more gun death. Colombia, 2015. 20.38 gun deaths with 10.10 .10 guns. Again, less guns, more gun deaths. Now, just for fun, I throw in the populations. Venezuela's 31.98 31 million. El Salvador, 6.378 million. Brazil, 209.3 million. Colombia, 49.07 million. And the United States, 327.2 million people. So, four countries have less guns, less people, and higher gun deaths. Hmm. So, maybe the gun ownership and gun deaths rates are not linear. By the way, the population, I just went to Google typing the country population. Line number two. We don't need stronger gun regulation because gun violence is declining. Okay, from the article. This lie is fun because the way it depends on careful framing. Gun violence defined as crimes committed with guns has been declining for decades. Okay, that's good, right? That's what we want. From the article. That makes sense since crime in general has been declining for decades. However, despite a lower crime rate, guns are now competing with automobile accidents for one of the leading causes of premature death in the United States. When accidents and suicides are included, included in the statistics, gun deaths have been constantly rising, while most other causes of death are declining. Crimes committed with guns has been declining for decades. Gun deaths have been constantly rising. Which one is it? Is it going down or is it going up? Mind you, this is an article exposing lies. But they're telling you two contradictory things. Hmm. Weird. Line number three. We didn't have this problem in my day because people loved Jesus and didn't play violent video games. Okay. 
from the article, Gun Violence Happens Because Americans Turned Our Backs on God. And his kids these days, so explanation of gun carnage, is a favorite of drunk uncles and MAGA caps all over the country. Well, that's an opinion. The, th the problem with opinions is they're subjective to the individual, so opinions really can't be truth or lies. They're just something you say. From the article, mass murder has always been a feature of American life, from the slaughter of Native Americans to the lynching of black citizens. Okay, so both of these groups use guns to defend themselves. And the Native Americans were slaughtered by the government, who's going to have guns, no matter what. So what's your point? That we should give up our guns? From the article, we just haven't always had such broad, unregulated, cheap access to such incredible, incredibly lethal toys. Okay, 1791. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the free states, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. 143 years later, 1934, the National Firearms Law was passed. One of the large, one of the first gun control laws in the United States. So for 143 years, anyone could buy any gun they wanted. Anybody could buy any weapon. You can go and buy a Thompson submachine gun through the mail and have it delivered to your front door. We haven't always had such broad unreg. No, we've had no regulations basically for 143 years. Thousands of black Americans were killed in mass violence in the same era, like the white riot that destroyed Tulsa's Black Wall Street in 1921. And how many of those people were saved because they had guns? Versus how many were slaughtered because they didn't? In general, we are living through an era of declining crime and mayhem. Gun deaths now stand out against a backdrop of relative public calm. Again, that's an opinion. Not really truth or fact. Line number four, the Second Amendment blocks gun regulation. From the article, Americans happily place curbs on our rights to religious freedom, blocking people from committing acts of violence, fraud, or abuse in the name of faith. Those are crimes no matter what you say. If I commit fraud because I want to do it, it's just as illegal as if I said God told me to. Faith has nothing to do with any of that. From the article, free speech is limited by laws banning libel and or or incitement. Let me tell you, free speech is limited by laws banning libel or incitement, and that's bad. Okay, it's also illegal to kill somebody with a gun, regardless of how you feel about that person, as long as it's they're saving lives. You know. From the article, Americans have constitutionally protected the right to obtain an to obtain an abortion, yet many of those same people advocating Second Amendment absolutism suddenly lose interest in the Constitution when the subject turns to reproductive rights. Again, that's an opinion. And I don't really understand how that fits together. From the article, as a general rule, people tend to cite constitutional protections when they don't have, when they don't want to debate the merits of an issue, Gun advocates are passionate about civil liberties until those liberties become inconvenient. First of all, again, those are both opinions. So, again, you can't use opinions to debate fact. Okay? Line number five. The solution to gun violence is more gun ownership. Excuse me. From the article. This lie would, would be too bizarre to earn column space. But politicians are actually using it to build policy, putting guns in places like schools, churches, and bars. Like that guy in Texas who saved at least 50 lives because he had a gun. Shame on him. What a horrible person. There is no empir from the article, there is no empirical basis for the claim, but is sometimes accompanied by one misleading data point. Okay. In a twist on lie two, gun advocates point out that a massive rise in gun sales in recent decades has coincided with the long decline in crime rates. Reductions in crime have also coincided with a long trend of rising ocean temperatures and an increase in, in, in an increase in the number of black quarterbacks in the NFL. 
Without some explanation of cause, this factoid is useless. Well, the same can be said for gun crimes. There are many factors that can be attributed to the crime levels. So, without some explanation of cause, that factoid is useless as well. Hmm, weird. Line number six. Chicago has tight gun re restrictions and mass gun violence. Ergo, gun laws don't work. From the article, Indiana's rate of gun deaths is roughly a third higher than in Illinois. Well, Wikipedia states Illinois' gun death rate, or I can't remember the number on this one, but Illinois has 1,490 gun deaths. I think it's an average a year. Indiana's 997. That's 439 more people killed in Illinois by guns in the United, than, Indiana, in, in, than in Indiana. So how is it a roughly third higher when Illinois is, is higher? You can't have a lower, lower number a third higher than the higher number. That just doesn't make sense. From the article, most of the guns used in a crime in Chicago were originally purchased in Indiana or Mississippi. This is from actually a... a representative from Illinois. About 21% of gun deaths confiscated by, by police in Chicago are traced back to gun shops across the board in Indiana. So 21% is most. I'm noticing the problem with numbers is coming up a few times here. 21 is the majority. From the article. A Chicagoan can walk across the street into Indiana and purchase firearms from an unlicensed seller with no trace tracking of that transaction. That person can then walk back across the street into Chicago and commit a crime. This is commonplace. Yeah, it's also illegal. So why would another law stop them from doing that? So they're going to be breaking two laws instead of just one. Number, lie number seven. We should enforce existing gun laws before imposing new ones. Makes sense. From the article, calls for more determined enforcement of existing laws are the most darkly cynical lie in the debate over guns. Our gun laws are carefully crafted to be unenforceable. Please explain how. From the article, one law stands out as the most critical obstacle to enforce gun registration, to enforcement of gun restrictions. A minor provision of the 1986 Firearm Owners Pro Protection Act bans states or federal agencies from building gun registries. Okay, so how would criminals, or how would you enforce the criminals to enforce to register their guns? Only law-abiding citizens will follow the law that we're already following. From the article, Congress has protected gun companies from lawsuits, okay? So we should also let people sue car manufacturers for car accidents? Another running theme I'm seeing amongst this stuff is they want all these regulations for guns, but nothing else. Either you apply the law against everybody in all things, or you don't. Threat from the article. Threats from the NRA have blocked the Centers for Disease Control from researching gun deaths. Two things on this one. First of all, where do the statistics on gun deaths come from then? Are you making them up? Secondly, um, guns are not a disease. You can't catch guns. I guess technically you could if somebody threw it to you and you can catch it. But anyway, you know, there's no pill to take for guns. There's no treatment for guns. It's not a disease. So why is the Center for Disease Control doing anything about it? Okay, from the article, state and federal laws block law enforcement officials from effectively tracking weapons used in crimes. Again, so that statistic that you stated about most guns used in Chicago come from Indiana, was that a guess? Since they block people from tracking that, how do you know that 21% came from Indiana. From the article, Chicago's frustrating efforts to crack down on gun traffickers illustrates the problem with existing gun laws. Absence of tracking 
makes enforcement practical, if not impossible. The blind spot fosters a rich climate for illegal gun traffickers in Indiana. Even when federal officials catch someone funneling weapons illegally in Chicago, obtaining convictions is difficult. Police invest little in enforcement efforts because prosecutors regularly decline cases. Prosecutors decline these cases because convictions are so rare. Without federal help, local law enforcement in Chicago has almost no means to stop the flow of guns. Without smart laws, even federal assistance has limited value. Calls to focus on enforcement of existing laws rather than reforms are a cynical ploy. So if the current laws are not being enforced, how would the reformed laws be enforced? Because laws are just words on paper until you enforce them. If you're not enforcing these words, why would you enforce these words? Line number eight. We need guns to protect ourselves from the government. Okay, from the article. Claims of a Second Amendment right to overthrow the government may be false. May be false. But they get us very close to understanding the honest motives behind the gun lobby. It does, actually. Um, it's also in the Oath of Enlistment. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Also in the Oath of Office for the President and other government officials, sort of, I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So, apparently you're saying protecting the Constitution is wrong. From the article, a dark truth lies in the Second Amendment remedies lie. What fuels the most passionate wing of the gun lobby is the American tradition of mob violence. A population armed with infantry weapons is no match against the organization and equipment of a modern nation state. But with the inaction of complacency of, law, of, local, of local law enforcement, a well-armed population can run riot over unprotected minorities. Okay, so apparently this person never heard of Vietnam or Afghanistan, where the locals pretty much ran ragged or ran rampant through well-trained, highly motivated, highly equipped militaries. Also, I seem to remember from history class about a group of colonies that stood up against one of the most well-trained well-armed militaries in the world and kicked their butts out and started a whole new country called the United States of America. Also, and I just noticed this, these unprotected minorities are the same ones you keep referring to that were slaughtered by the government. From the article, what happens when citizens take up arms against the government? Study the history of the Black Panthers. Despite being re reasonably well armed and organized, they were systematically hunted down and killed until the movement died out. First off, from what I'm gathering from what you're saying, reasonably well armed means none. So, and you're basically saying since the United States government hunted down hunted down and killed, these people we should all just give up. Also, the same government that hunted down and killed, these people should be the only ones with guns. So you're supporting hunting down and killing people because they agree, have different viewpoints than you do. From the article, well-armed white paramilitaries were the linchpin of Jim Crow waging a campaign of terrorism in black communities. Jim Crow was actually supported by the government. And how many of those black people in black communities that luckily enough had arms were spared over the ones who didn't? From the article, their private activities allowed local governments to impose crippling limits on black citizens while escaping accountability. One of those things to cripple them was depriving them the right of self-defense and the right of access to weapons so they couldn't resist which is what you're proposing from the article behind the second amendment remedies lie lurks a dark reality private arsenals have always been the bloody left hand 
of white supremacy. When gun enthusiasts shrug off the mass slaughter of innocent civilians to preserve freedom, they aren't talking about your freedom or mine. Uh, first off, again, that's an opinion. And who are these gun enthusiasts that are shrugging off the mass slaughter of innocent people? If anything, we're the ones saying we need weapons to protect ourselves against mass slaughter. Line number nine. No legislate, legislation can curb gun deaths in the United States. Okay. From the article, our habit of imposing complicated and confusing restrictions on weapons by type and shape is largely theater, designed to create a sensation of progress while avoiding the fundamental problem. Yeah, first off, laws don't matter to people who don't care about the law. Secondly, saying this gun is okay because it has a plastic thing but this gun is not okay because it has a plastic thing. Even though they function exactly the same thing, it does absolutely nothing. From the article. Instead, we should adopt simpler, more powerful solution. Register every gun at every gun sale. Require, require gun owners to obtain a license. Make liability insurance a requirement for every gun owner. Track to every gun. Require proof of insurance for every sale. Track sales of ammunition just like we tracked the sales of Sudafed. Make these, guns and gu make these gun and ammunition registries available to law enforcement. It is a simple constitutional approach that preserves the right of responsible adults to own as many weapons as they want, so long as they can demonstrate responsible, safe ownership. First off, again, how are you going to go out and get the criminals to register their guns? How are you going to get them to get insurance on their guns? How are you going to get them to register their ammunition? And how do you register ammunition anyway? I've got 500 rounds of 9mm. What if I drop one down a sewer grate? Do I have to call somebody and let them know? Secondly, who determines responsible safe ownership? And how do you demonstrate that? And how do you enforce that? Let's say I demonstrate that I have my pistol, I have it locked in a box and encased that in concrete. How are you going to know that when I got home, I didn't bust that concrete open, pull it out, and throw it in my front lawn? How do you even know that? Unless you come to my house every so often and look. Register, from the article, registration and insurance would not stop every crime. Just like they failed to stop every automobile death. They would, however, begin to bring down gun deaths almost immediately. I just thought about this, but when has any law worked immediately? It takes a time to process that stuff. Anyway, nearly 1.25 million die each row each day. Now, let me say. Nearly 1.25 million people die in road crashes each year. On average, that's 3,286 deaths a year. I don't know what that is, so I'm not going to tell you what that link is, but it's down in the description. According to Wikipedia, 33,636 deaths per year by guns. That's 92 a day. So, every day. 3,194 more people die on the road than by guns. Yeah, that registration and insurance really helped. Faced with registration and insurance costs, declines in casual gun ownership would accelerate. So more people, or poor, poor people, would not have access to firearms to defend themselves. Hmm, weird. Registries would empower police to enforce gun laws. Again, except for those criminals who are not going to register their guns. From the article again, I forget to say that every once in a while. Liability suits and criminal actions against irresponsible gun owners would severely constrain criminals' access to weapons. So again, how is suing a gun company going to stop Carl Craig Dealer from buying a pistol from Gary Gangbanger? Let's say gun company A was completely out of business. All of their products are still out there the legal ones and the illegal ones. So they're still there. So how is that going to affect it? From the article, instead of waiting for the F HEF to crack down on illegal sellers, lawyers representing murder victims 
could quickly bankrupt today's crop of amateur gun smugglers. So a lawyer working for this person can find the illegal gun dealer, but the ATF, who has millions of dollars in manpower and equipment, can't find him. How much is that one person willing to put into that lawsuit and pay that lawyer to track down and do stings, which would be illegal if you're not a law enforcement agency, to find this illegal gun dealer? From the article, liability risks on sellers and insurers make it more difficult for the obviously mentally ill to buy, build an arsenal. Uh, mentally ill people are forbidden from owning firearms since the 1968 Gun Control Act. So that's already illegal. Now, line number 10. Americans oppose tighter gun regulation. From the article, when presented with concrete proposals to regulate guns, majorities of, majorities of Americans almost favor them. Almost always favor them. That support is so universal that it spreads across partisan lines. In fact, a ballot proposal on gun control passed in Nevada of all places. More than 90% of gun owners support universal background checks. A majority of Republicans support national gun registry. Again, first of all, that's opinion. Secondly, um, and this is something I have a problem with a lot of these articles and stuff. Where is your citing? Where is your data coming from? Because I'm looking here, and I'm seeing a bunch of opinions. I'm not in there yet. One. Why does it keep going up? So I'm at the bottom of the article. <laughs> Reading some about best portable chargers. I don't know. Comments. Comments. There are other articles. Other articles. Yep. No citing of any facts of where any of this information came from. Hmm. Funny. I'm a schmuck. And I'm putting where I got my information from. Why can't this journalist do it? <laughs>